Okay, so you've sent over like a whole stack of articles about Cooper Coke, okay. uh, you know, the actor who played Erica Mendez in the Ryan Murphy like Monsters series. Oh, interesting choice. Right. But see, here's the thing. You're not just interested in like his performance, are you? I don't know. No, you want to like really deep dive into his connection with the actual Eric Menendez, which let's be real, is a little unusual. Definitely uh, not something you see every day. An actor forming a bond with the very person they're portraying, <laughs> especially with a case this, uh, you know, this high profile, this controversial. Exactly. OK, so we're going to unpack all of it. How did Cooper even prepare for a role this intense? What was it like for him to actually meet Eric Menendez face to face in prison? And how does all of this connect to what's happening right now with the Menendez case? Which, by the way, is suddenly back in the news. It's wild, right? Like, the case itself is getting a whole second act decades later. Totally. But before we get ahead of ourselves, for anyone listening who might not have the whole Menendez case, like, memorized, let's uh, let's do, like, a quick recap. Always a good idea. Picture it. 1989, Beverly Hills, California. A really shocking crime. Jose and Kitty Menendez are found murdered in their mansion. And their sons, Lyle and Eric, well, they become the prime suspects. And that's when it got really crazy, right? The trials, the media frenzy, yeah. the whole debate about their motive. I mean, it was everywhere. You couldn't escape it. And in the end, both brothers were convicted and sentenced to life in prison. Case closed. Everyone thought that was it. Fast forward to today, Netflix releases Monsters, the Lyle and Eric Menendez story, and boom, suddenly everyone's talking about the Menendez brothers again, questioning the narrative they thought they knew. Which brings us back to Cooper Coke. Mm -hmm. He plays Eric in the series and, like, by all accounts, delivers this powerful, nuanced performance. But you found some interesting stuff about his process, how he prepped for the role. And that's what I find so intriguing. Oh, it's intense. This wasn't just like your average actor research. We're talking hours spent watching and rewatching Eric's testimony, even sleeping with the script. Like he was fully immersed. You know, in one of these articles, there's this quote from Coke that you highlighted. And he talks about being so struck by Eric's shame. And that's what he really tried to tap into that deep seated shame. Yes. And to do that, he really focused on. Eric's physicality, you know, yeah. how he carried himself, the hunched shoulders, that tension in his jaw. It's like he was trying to physically inhabit that emotional space, which I think is fascinating. It really does point to like a whole other level of empathy, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. This wasn't just about playing a character. It was about trying to understand this complex and troubled man. And that brings us to what happened after the series aired, because Cooper Coke didn't just walk away from this role, did he? Not at all. He went and visited Eric Menendez in prison. Which is just, I mean, wow. How yeah. often does that happen? It does kind of feel like something out of a movie. The actor reaching out to the real life person he portrayed going to visit him in prison. And not just any prison, right? We're talking maximum security. Plus, it wasn't just a quick hello. From, from what I've read, they've actually kept in touch talking on the phone pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. Okay, see, now that's where I'm like, whoa, hold on. Because if I'm remembering correctly, Eric Menendez was not happy about the series. Yeah. At all. Oh, yeah. He actually spoke out against it publicly before it even aired. Called yeah. it inaccurate, a total misrepresentation. And yet here we are with Cooper Koch. Yeah. Not only did he, like, completely immerse himself in the role, but then he reaches out, builds this connection, that even becomes an advocate for Eric's potential release. That's some serious commitment. Really makes you think about that line between performance and reality. How does an actor separate themselves from a role like that, especially after forming that kind of bond? Yeah, we haven't even mentioned the whole King Kardashian angle. She visited the Menendez brothers in prison, too. Yeah. Right alongside Coach. It's like this extra layer of surrealness on top of an already pretty unbelievable story. But it also speaks to this whole movement, this push to re-examine the case, especially the allegations of abuse. And the series definitely played a role in that. Which brings us to that really powerful episode, episode five, I think it was where Eric describes the abuse he says he endured. You were saying it was filmed in this really unique way. Oh yeah. It's basically one long take, 35 minutes straight, capturing the intensity of Eric's confession. And Coke actually did eight full takes of that scene. Eight takes. <laughs> eight. I can't even imagine the emotional toll that must have taken. It's hard to even wrap your head around. And that episode in particular has really sparked debate, especially now with this potential new evidence that the LADA is reviewing. Because it brings the abuse to the forefront. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that wasn't as central in the original trials. Exactly. And this is where it ties into what Koch said about Eric struggling to express his emotions, that shame he carried. It's like what Javier Bardem said about Jose Menendez. Remember, he played the father. Right. He talked about how toxic masculinity was like the central theme for Jose's character. That whole inability to communicate, to be vulnerable, 
especially for men of that generation. Mm -hmm. It's like a recipe for disaster. And you can't help but wonder how things might have been different if there had been open communication, if those emotions had an outlet. It's like we're seeing the aftershocks of that silence decades later. Mm -hmm. And now with this new evidence and everyone looking back at the case, it feels like we might finally be getting a little bit closer to the truth. Or at least a new perspective on it. So this is about way more than just like two brothers and a crime now, isn't it? It's like this whole bigger thing. Yeah, now you're talking about abuse, family secrets, the justice system. Like, can it even handle looking back at a case like this after all this time? Mm -hmm. And the fact that a show on Netflix brought it all back up just makes it even weirder. It's like monsters pried open the door. Mm -hmm. And now that there's this new evidence, everybody and their mother is trying to squeeze through wanting answers. Right. Maybe even some closure or at least like trying to actually figure out what really happened. Because for so long, it seemed like an open and shut case. Totally. And now... Now it just gets more complicated every day. Remember those old true crime shows our grandparents used to watch? The ones with the bad footage and the super dramatic music? Back then, everything seemed so black and white, so easy to solve. Mm, yeah, but real life is nothing like that, is it? Not even close. And this new evidence... Especially the stuff about the abuse could change everything. I mean, that's what this hearing on November 26th is going to be all about, right? Exactly. The DA isn't messing around. They're taking this new evidence seriously. And while we have to remember that Lyle and Eric Menendez were convicted by a jury, this new stuff could lead to a whole new trial. Maybe even lighter sentences. Who knows? It's like someone hit rewind on a story everyone thought was over. And that's what makes this so fascinating, right? We're talking about a case that was all over the tabloids, and now it's making everyone have these really important conversations about justice, about accountability, about how we as a society see abuse, especially in families. So where does that leave us at the end of this deep dive? Besides the fact that I don't think I can watch another true crime documentary without thinking about all this. Well, I think it's a good reminder that even cases that seem straightforward can have a lot more going on under the surface. And it shows us just how much damage abuse can do, how it can affect people for their whole lives. And it makes us ask some hard questions about our justice system, how it works, what it can and can't do. It's definitely a lot to think about. But one thing's for sure, this story is far from over. Who knows what this upcoming hearing will uncover or how it's going to affect the Menendez brothers. Yeah. And what about the bigger picture? What will this whole thing teach us about ourselves, about how our ideas about justice and taking responsibility have changed over time? Now, that is something to think about. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me.